Legend of Exorcism Chapter 75 An Unexpected Guest In the thirteenth year of the Tianbao era, on the third day of the third month, spring came to the Guangzhou region. The city of Chang'an blossomed with peach blossoms, which bloomed brilliantly and splendidly. To celebrate the imperial consort's 35th birthday in the sixth month, officials from all across the land had offered up all kinds of rare and precious gems in a steady stream, and messengers came and went at top speed. The ABBA SIDS, the Simu, the Uyghurs, the Tubo, the various peoples of the Siwai region knew that Li Longji lavished favor on imperial consort Yang, so to show their loyalty, nothing was better than to curry the Yang family's favor, and they all began to make preparations early. There were still almost a hundred days until the birthday, but Chang'an was already bustling more so than usual. Thousands of seamstresses were weaving longevity brocade in Daming Palace, and every night the lights blazed and turned the darkness into day. From Qinchuan all the way to Luyang and the Central Plains, people were busy making lanterns, colorful candles, silk banners, and the like. For a time, the Great Tang mobilized the power of its entire nation to celebrate the imperial consort's birthday, showing the extraordinary prowess of this long-lived dynasty. Within the exorcism department, the air was filled with spring, and M. Origin and them hadn't expected that after a single winter, everyone would have gathered together again. Chu Yangtze had just returned to Jiangnan and managed to catch a breath, but before he could even eat the dishes of his hometown, he had rushed over on another long journey here and returned to the exorcism department to take up residence there, so he now felt a rare moment of vigor. Atai, however, was facing a long ledger of red. He and Ashin Akayan were currently racking their brains, trying to figure out how to earn money. Where's Hung Jun? Lu Su asked expressionlessly. Mo Rajin replied, Zhenqi will bring him back, relax B.A. Where do you want to go play today? On the snowy night of New Year's Eve, when Hung Jun had left them all and raced off on his horse, Li Jinglong had told everyone not to move out, as he himself would definitely bring Hung Jun back. Lu Su had originally wanted to give chase as well, but Mo Rajin managed to talk him out of it. Everyone had then followed Li Jinglong's orders and returned to the exorcism department to wait. No one had expected that this trip of theirs would take them a whole three months, and in that time, the group only received a single letter Li Jinglong had returned to the Taehang Mountains with Hung Jun. Lu Su had nowhere to go, and at first, because of what had happened in Dunhuang, he had been angry at M. Origin, but after a few months had passed, when he thought carefully about it, there wasn't much to be angry at in the first place. He was also even less willing to stay alone in Hexi, so he came with the rest of the group to Chang'an. Lu Su had been born and raised in the north, so he had never seen the splendor of Chang'an. It was just like when Hung Jun had first entered this world, Lu Su had never been in a city before, so as soon as they arrived in Guangzhou, he grew bug-eyed at the sights. Not to mention that after he entered Chang'an, he was even more shocked by the brilliance of these huge cities of the Divine Land, and for a time, he tossed his unhappiness to the back of his mind. M. Origin, on the other hand, had been struggling the entire journey. Should he wait upon this white deer like he would a wife, or should he treat this white deer like a brother? Originally, this was supposed to be a destined love, but in the end, the heavens had actually given him a male wife. But if he didn't marry Lu Su like his tribal customs dictated, what was he supposed to do with the rest of his life? Atai, go ask Zhenqi. Chiu Yangtze, ask Zhenqi Ah. Ashin Akayan, you should have said so earlier. If you don't want him, give him to me. M. Origin. No matter how M. Origin asked his brothers, he couldn't get a response that resolved his problems. But he did still like Lu Su very much, and no matter if Lu Su did become his future wife or not, the white deer was still his to take care of, and he had a duty to be good company for Lu Su. With that, M. Origin, in a monkey see, monkey do way, copied what Li Jinglong had done every day. He settled Lu Su in, right in between his and Hung Jun's rooms. 
When Lu Su had entered the city, he had praised that the cherry blossoms of Chang'an were very pretty, and that he had never seen them in the north, so Emorijin bought a few cherry trees and planted them in the yard. At the beginning, he had even suspected if Lu Su would treat Hung Jun as his sweetheart, but slowly he began to realize that Lu Su was not unwilling to be friends with Chiu Yangsi, Atai, and even Ashin Akayan. Before, in Dunhuang, Lu Su had dogged Hung Jun's every step, just because he had only known Hung Jun, so after stealing his body back, he naturally felt a sense of closeness with him. But Lu Su's attitude towards Ashin Akayan was a little unbearable for Emo Rajin. Ashin Akayan had also declared loud and clear that he liked pretty youths. Li Jinglong hadn't even clearly taken Ashin Akayan in as a member of the exorcism department, they were really raising a wolf in their own home. Even though the real wolf was Emo Rajin himself, he still did his best to avoid letting Lu Su and Ashin Akayan grow too close, thankfully Ashin Akayan didn't seem to be very interested in Lu Su, and though he often took some liberties in speech, he wasn't too hospitable in his actions. It was because of that that Emo Rajin often took Lu Su out, while Ashin Akayan stayed with Atai at home, counting their money and figuring out where they could go to get some more, so that they could support their troops that were thousands of Li away. That day, Hung Jun had personally witnessed Chong Ming and Qing Xiong's epic fight, but thankfully, the battle of the two great Yao kings had ended as quickly as it had started, and after exploding a few mountains, peace was restored. Let's go home B.A., Li Jinglong said easily. Hung Jun knew that from today onwards, Ye Jin Palace was no longer his home, and when he left, that look that Qing Xiong had given him seemed to have also encompassed everything, go B.A., go to where you should be. Too many things had happened to him in this short half a year. The truth had rushed over him in twos and threes, almost drowning him. At night, he and Li Jinglong sat by a campfire in the desolate wilderness. He asked absent-mindedly, Zhenqi, will I die? Call me Jinglong B.A., Li Jinglong said. It's been a long time since anyone called me that. You will not, I promise you. Hung Jun. Hung Jun looked at him, his heart filled with complicated emotions. Ever since that night when Li Jinglong had climbed up the mountain with great difficulty and appeared in front of him, Hung Jun had come to realize some of the emotions that he felt towards Li Jinglong. The dim sense of disappointment that he had felt along the entire journey, and the sudden thumping of his heart when he met Li Jinglong's eyes, he could never resist recalling all those moments that they had spent together even if Li Jinglong was right in front of him. But Li Jinglong hadn't talked about their relationship at all, as if everything was going as it should. When he found that Hung Jun was looking at him, he turned his gaze away. After going through what had happened in Yejin Palace, both of them felt a little awkward. On the way back, they spoke very little, and Li Jinglong didn't even ask to ride the same horse as him. But as soon as Hung Jun opened his mouth, Li Jinglong would think of a way to satisfy all his requests. I don't want to ride a horse anymore, Hung Jun said to Li Jinglong. Riding is so tiring. Li Jinglong replied, I'll head to the village up ahead and hire a cart. Hung Jun had originally wanted Li Jinglong to let him ride with him, because for reasons that he couldn't articulate clearly right now, he only wanted to stay by his side. He hadn't expected Li Jinglong to misunderstand him, and after leaving the Taehang Mountains, he hired a spacious cart with an open roof, which was heading west with a spring merchant caravan to Bashu. Hung Jun The two of them sat together with a large pile of ceramics, glazed pottery, wine, silk, and similar goods, which were stopping by Chang'an on their journey. Along the way, Li Jinglong had Hung Jun admire the scenery of Guangzhou in the spring, and if they had nothing to do, he would find some words to amuse him, clearly afraid of him growing melancholy. In the end, Hung Jun did have the temperament of a youth, and his mood slowly grew better as well. When they took up lodgings for the night, Hung Jun had a guilty conscience, so he no longer cracked jokes with Li Jinglong like he had before. Li Jinglong, however, also sensed it a little, and he no longer teased Hung Jun. The two of them lay there, all prim and proper. As Hung Jun slept, 
he could never resist wanting to take a few liberties with Li Jinglong, but Li Jinglong acted like he had before, neither taking the initiative nor refusing him, which caused Hung Jun to feel a little like climbing the walls with frustration. On the last day, the two of them mounted their horses again, bidding farewell to the caravan that was heading towards Shuzhong. We're home, Li Jinglong said to Hung Jun, upon seeing the city of Chang'an. Hung Jun stopped his horse on the mountain slope, looking towards that towering capital of the Great Tang, on those 800 li of Kinchuan, and he felt like he had found a place to return to. Pinkong Li was bright with gaudy colors, while Zuck Street was solemn and lofty, the glazed tiles of Xin Qing Palace flashed with light, and the eastern and western markets were bustling with commotion. A spring breeze blew through the exorcism department, sending ripples across the spring waters. Li Jinglong asked, let's see who gets there first. And saying this, he actually kicked his horse into action, galloping towards Chang'an City, leaving a cloud of dust in his wake. Hung Jun let out a loud shout, following closely behind. In the third month, Chang'an glittered brightly with promise, and when they were about to enter the city, Li Jinglong slowed. The Long Wu soldier that was guarding the city hurried to say, Li Zhenqi. You finally returned. Li Jinglong had Hung Jun first enter the city. As expected, after being gone for so long, both the Judiciary Department and the Six Armies were looking for him, so Li Jinglong sent someone with a message for the Six Armies. Hung Jun stood to the side for a while, but he couldn't resist feeling a little disconsolate, and he said, You go take care of things B.A. They can wait for a few more days. Li Jinglong looked around at his surroundings, as if he was studying the geography of Chang'an, before he smiled at Hung Jun. Let's go. The two of them passed over the Zingguo Bridge, which was filled with peach blossoms. Li Jinglong then said, after a few days, the cherry blossoms will also bloom. When that time comes, I'll go ask the right people for a few trees and plant them outside your room. When they got to the entrance of Jinjinj Ward, their path was lined with trees, which had sprouted new leaves, thriving as they grew. Li Jinglong and Hung Jun chatted easily, speaking of how Chang'an had a spring hunt in the spring, and perhaps this year, the city would also celebrate the imperial consort's birthday. They turned the corner, only to see almost a hundred members of the Xinwu army decked out in armor, blocking the little alley outside the exorcism department en masse. Celebrating a birthday in such a grandiose manner, just as Hung Jun was speaking, he saw this many people, and he immediately thought, damn, it couldn't be that something bad's happened, can it? Li Zhenqi's come back. Li Jinglong gestured for Hung Jun to remain silent and leave it to him to explain. They passed through the alley, and the Xinwu troops parted to the two sides, revealing a Hu woman holding a long whip, and several Xinwu soldiers collapsed on the ground, rolling around and moaning. Behind the Hu woman stood Atai and Ashen Akayan, their faces ashen, their bodies trembling, and there was also a fish head draped over the wall. Hung Jun, that fish head shouted immediately upon seeing Hung Jun. Hung Jun hurried to gesture for the Karpiao not to speak. Li Jinglong furrowed his brow and demanded, What's going on? That Hu woman put her hands on her hips and shouted angrily, Who's in charge of things here? Come out and talk. The Hu woman's skin was dark, and she had bells around her wrist. She only wore an undergarment that covered her chest and stomach and a long dress. Her hair was curly, her eyelashes were full and thick, and her eyes were as clear and bright as obsidian. Her figure was slender and extremely attractive, and when she turned and gave them a look, Hung Jun's heart thumped, and he couldn't help praising her beauty. To Reinduct, Atai immediately said, that's our leader. At this time, the Karpyao had already shrunk into itself. The Hu woman who had been called to Reinduct pointed towards Li Jinglong, saying, Come, 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 you come over here. The members of the Xinwu army immediately said, We'll leave this place to Li Zhenqi, we'll take our leave now. And as they spoke, they hurried to evacuate the area, bringing their comrades that were lying on the ground, crying out piteously. 
Li Jinglong looked at that Hu woman, and he asked, What business have you come here for? I'm here to take my fiancé back, the Hu woman said bossily. Why are you harboring him? Him right there. Him. Tegla. You, explain this to me clearly. Also you. Ashina Kayan. Hung Jun. Li Jinglong. The Hu woman grabbed Atai's collar, and Atai, who usually exuded an air of calm, was like a mouse that had seen a cat. He trembled as he was tugged out, and he hurried to use his eyes to send a message. Hey, hey. Hung Jun was not one to sit still either, and he grew angry. Let go of him. What? The Hu woman also grew incensed and sent Atai sprawling to the side with a kick. Come here, and we'll fight it out. Don't fight. Atai and Li Jinglong hurried to shout. Only after a long while did Li Jinglong realize that it turned out that it was Atai's fiancé who had come to their door, and as soon as she had appeared, without saying another word, she was about to take Atai and leave. Atai seemed to be very afraid of this fiancé, and the members of the exorcism department hadn't even heard of her. Chiu Yangsi was afraid that this Hu woman would see him as one of Atai's accomplices and beat him up, so he immediately turned tail and ran away, Ammo Rijin was also not a fool, and he immediately took Lu Su out to see the sights. Each of those manly men immediately took off on their own once this great catastrophe was at hand, and though Ashina Kayan had also wanted to run, Atai blocked his way out by standing outside the main entrance to the exorcism department. It just so happened that the members of the Xinwu army that were patrolling the city stumbled across the scene, and decreed that the Hu woman was not to create such a ruckus outside a government office. However, all the Hu woman had to do was wave her whip once. It hurts that much. The corners of Li Jinglong's mouth twitched. You must never offend her. Atai and Ashina Kayan had already become birds that startled at the sight of a bow. This is a government office, Li Jinglong said to the Hu woman. Royal consort, as soon as Tegla enters these doors, he takes on the role of an exorcist. Right now, he is on duty, and even if you have personal matters to settle, you cannot come to the government office to capture him. Who believes you, the Hu woman said. You don't know how much I suffered trying to find this guy. And you all are still protecting him. How about me? Will anyone care about me? Although the Hu woman looked like she wasn't afraid of anything, when she spoke these words, Hung Jun's heart ached a little. How long have you been searching for him? Three years. It's been a whole three years already. A moment earlier, Hung Jun was still helping A Tai but now he immediately switched sides and said angrily, Atai, how could you be like this? Atai, whose side are you on? Hung Jun. In Chang'an, Tegla resides right here, Li Jinglong explained patiently. He is registered as an exorcist on the books, so he won't leave. How about we, go inside to talk? Li Jinglong raised a hand, and that wall of the exorcism department dissolved, revealing the main entrance. With that, the Hu woman finally let out a breath, and the group and the fish entered. Upon seeing Hung Jun return, the Karpiao immediately hopped to its feet and leapt into Hung Jun's arms. The two of them went inside, still covered in the dust of their travels, and not long after, Chiu Yangtze, Ammo Rijin, and Lu Su returned. Upon seeing Hung Jun, Lu Su let out a joyful cry, kicked off his boots, and leapt over, climbing onto Hung Jun's back, the two of them tumbling into a pile of laughter. As for later matters, Li Jinglong indicated that they could be saved for a little bit later. They first set out tea to welcome to Reindict. When she saw this many people, to Reindict was no longer as fierce and tough as she had before. Instead, sobs began to intersperse themselves in her words as she began to cry. She first used the Toarian language to soundly accuse Atai, and Atai, who usually had on that insouciant, high miho by attitude, hurried to apologize over and over to the Hu woman. You can do whatever you want, Atai said, as long as you don't use that whip to hit me. 
Ashinakayan hurried to say, say as I, this matter has nothing to do with me at all. I only found this bastard Tegla right before the new year. Everyone. To Raindak then said to Li Jinglong and the rest, do you know how hard it was for me to find him? Everyone hurried to nod as they all looked towards the whip. The Hu woman then said, I won't use the deathly painful whip to hit you all, don't worry. So that's called the deathly painful whip. Hung Jun understood, and he nodded. To Raindak vented for a while longer before Li Jinglong said, It looks like it's getting dark too, so why don't you? Li Jinglong was just wondering whether or not he should let the Hu woman stay in the exorcism department. Even though their marriage was arranged, they hadn't performed the ceremony, and though the Great Tang's customs were liberal, arranging it so would be a violation of etiquette. I've opened up a wine shop in the Western Market, to Raindak said at the end, after wiping her tears. I'll come once every day. Tegla, if you dare to run again. Then use your whip to hit them B.A., Atai replied. Shut up, everyone raged at him. You walk her back. Li Jinglong said, enraged. What kind of nonsense is this, Tegla? When you get back, I still have some words for you. Atai could only remain meek and subservient as he walked to Raindak back. The rest of them couldn't resist gathering and gossiping for a bit, all of them denouncing Atai for being so wanton while already having a fiancé. What was more important was that he had even brought trouble upon the exorcism department, which was really too much. A while later, once everything had been settled, only then did they begin to exchange information. Li Jinglong only schemed over the matter of him and Hung Jun heading up the Taehang Mountains to visit Chongming. What they were worried about before, they already had a way to resolve. Where did this way come from? Hung Jun glanced at Li Jinglong upon hearing those words, but Li Jinglong merely nodded back at him, a bit of a smile in his eyes, meaning that Hung Jun should believe in him. Hung Jun left in a hurry, Li Jinglong said. We forgot to bring a few regional specialties with us. No worries, no worries, Chiu Yangsi hurried to say. As long as it's resolved, then that's good. M. Origin said, that's really very great. Lu Su looked askance at Hung Jun, who nodded. Li Jinglong then began to ask after the various sundry matters of the exorcism department, in these days while Zhenxi had been gone, the department had raised M. Origin as their head. The Judiciary Department had sent quite a lot of scrolls, but everyone had let them sit for the time being. There's more. Li Jinglong asked. M. O. Rajin replied, since the Imperial Consort's birthday is approaching, the Six Armies and the Judiciary Department are all afraid of something going wrong, so as soon as they ran into a case that they couldn't solve, they sent it to us. Li Jinglong and Ed, thought for a bit, and said, what happened in Hexi also has to be reported to the Crown Prince and His Majesty. On some other day, I'll go see the Emperor, but in these few days, everyone should first rest well. What about that black Xiao? Lu Su asked directly, without taking the hint. Li Jinglong seemed to have long been prepared for this, and he replied, Wait, wait until he comes to our doorstep. I have a plan, but I haven't fully thought it through yet. When the time comes, I will bring it up, so that I can get everyone's opinions. Let's disperse B.A. The group then went off to do their own things. When Hung Jun went back to his room, he saw that the courtyard was filled with peach blossoms, and he couldn't resist an exclamation of surprise. Lu Su followed closely behind him as he came and went, and he said from outside, This place is really nice. Do you like it? Hung Jun asked. Lu Su was a little lost as he stood under the cherry blossom tree in the spring wind. He didn't respond to that question, instead saying, Hung Jun, as soon as my antlers grow out, I'll help you, don't worry. Hung Jun thought to himself, more or less, Lu Su had probably already guessed everything, so he sucked in a breath, rising to stand with Lu Su. He slung one arm over his shoulder, gesturing for him to come in, before he closed the door. Li Jinglong came over along the hallway, 
and upon seeing Hung Jun and Lu Su enter the room and close the door, their movements smooth, he wondered what kind of unspeakable things they were doing, and he couldn't resist a jolt. But M. Origin stood behind Li Jinglong, saying, Zinchi, there's something I have to ask you. Li Jinglong hurried to wave his hand, scooting forward from one side to listen in on their conversation from outside the room. Oi! M. Origin said, let's go quickly. And with that, he forcefully dragged Li Jinglong away. End chapter Legend of Exorcism Chapter 76 A Heart Stirring with Excitement Li Jinglong and M. Origin stood in the yard. M. Origin had explained what had happened after they returned, before he then looked at Li Jinglong. Li Jinglong, however, took pleasure from his misery. I'm still waiting to arrange a marriage between you two, so when will you get married? M. Origin. How about you two? M. Origin shot back in response. Li Jinglong was instantly at a loss for words, and M. Origin scanned him up and down. After thinking about it for a bit, Li Jinglong finally said, his dad handed him over to me. The two of them were quiet for a time. Li Jinglong was still thinking about how as soon as Hung Jun had come back, he had gone off to tell Lu Su some secret, and none of his attention was on M. Origin's matter. And what does this have to do with you? Li Jinglong asked. Of course it has something to do with me. M. Origin hesitated for a long time, before he finally eked out a question. When are you going to take Hung Jun as your wife? Don't use that phrase. Li Jinglong said. That's too awkward. I'm not taking him as a wife, and he's not taking me as a wife either. Do you have to put it like that? M. Origin looked at Li Jinglong doubtfully, saying, Doesn't seem like it, but Zinchi, you too did that. Li Jinglong. I thought you had some dire matter, but you keep asking about these things. Is this what a subordinate should be asking? Don't. Don't, don't. M. Origin hurried to grab Li Jinglong, saying, Zinchi, you have to understand where I'm coming from. How Hung Jun and I are is not something that outsiders need to involve themselves in, Li Jinglong said. M. Origin finally wailed pitifully, if you two don't take the lead, I don't know how I'm supposed to do it. Only after a long while did Li Jinglong understand what M. Origin meant. You even need me to teach you this. If you like him, then go. M. Origin really didn't know what to do. Technically, it didn't matter if the white deer was male or female, but to marry a man was something a little beyond his imagination. Historically, the gray wolf and the white deer had never both been men at the same time. You'll get hit by lightning then. M. Origin said in the end. Li Jinglong's expression changed. M. Origin, are you cursing me? M. Origin hurried to wave his hand, meaning that he had no such thought in mind. The Shai Wei people did have a custom of sleeping with young men, but... Then isn't that fine? Li Jinglong said. Otherwise, should I ask the crown prince to arrange your marriage, so you can consummate it today? M. Origin replied, but that's something that only coarse people do. Oh, Zinchi. I'm definitely not cursing you out, but in the Shai Wei tribe, only coarse people will go fuck, those uh, horses, sheep, boys. Li Jinglong interrupted him. Shut up. Is there anything else? If there isn't, then I'm leaving. In the end, M. Origin said, you should go first B.A., Zinchi. When you two get together, then I'll have the confidence as well. Give us an example to follow. Li Jinglong watched M. Origin for a while, noticing that the Karpia was standing behind him, studying the two of them doubtfully. Suddenly, he waved towards M. Origin, drew close to his ear, and said quietly, Brother, compared to those sheep and horses or whatever. What you should worry about is whether or not Lu Su will agree. Li Jinglong studied M. Origin, one eyebrow raised. Though Lu Su's antlers were gone, he still ran as fast as the wind, and if he really wanted to run, even Hung Jun wouldn't be able to catch up with him. 
M. Origin, you really have so much confidence in yourself? M. Origin. I don't want to pay any attention to your guy's messy matters. Li Jinglong was just about to leave when the Karpyao called out to him. Hey, second eldest, the Karpyao said swaggeringly, its arms on its hips. I have a few questions for you. Li Jinglong. Li Jinglong really wanted to, like how Hung Jun had taught him on their journey, find a tree branch, whittle it down, and stab it into the Karpyao. Just like that, he wanted to string it on the stick and place it over a fire to roast. Eldest, please speak, Li Jinglong indicated that he was all ears. The Karpyao scrutinized him with suspicion, but Li Jinglong merely stared back, his expression cold and impassive. Hung Jun had run about for many days and finally returned home. When he laid down on his bed, he felt that this home in the exorcism department was the most comfortable place on this earth, and he didn't want to go anywhere. So, Hung Jun said to Lu Su, after describing what had happened in Yejin Palace in detail, we came back. When will your antlers grow out? Lu Su climbed onto the bed, sitting by Hung Jun's side. He shook his head, a lost expression appearing in his eyes. Do you want to know about the matters of the past? Lu Su asked. My mana's come back a little, and though it's not anywhere near what it was before, it might not be a problem to let you have a dream. Hung Jun, however, shook his head, and he smiled as he said, I don't want to anymore. If at this moment, Hung Jun still clung on to those matters of the past, then that meant he was still holding on to that past between Li Jinglong and himself. And Lu Su also knew of this past, which was why he was worried about Hung Jun, but upon hearing these words, he couldn't help but startle. Directly face what you are thinking, Lu Su said. You clearly know where those emotions you feel inside you come from. Whether it be like or hate, why are you unwilling to admit it? There's no point in deceiving both yourself as well as others. Now, it was Hung Jun's turn to startle. Though Lu Su's words were for the matters of the past, they became the best explanation for Hung Jun's worry over what he would gain or lose now. Why was he unwilling to admit it? There was no point in deceiving both himself and others. That's right, Hung Jun explained, but it's not that I'm not willing to admit to it, I'll admit to it all. It's just that after going home this time, I've become aware of many things. The more I persist in finding out the truth, the sadder I get, so I don't wish to go digging to the root of the matter anymore. When Hung Jun said this, Lu Su was a little at a loss for how to respond. He asked, then, the seed of Mara. Hung Jun sat up and said earnestly to Lu Su, Lu Su, I have a thought. Lu Su. Since this was his innate destiny, perhaps he would never be able to be free of the devil seed for his entire life. Hung Jun also naturally knew that Li Jinglong's words today were spoken just to comfort him, and so that everyone would stop worrying about him. He figured that there wasn't any special way, at most, it'd be like what had happened in his childhood, and they would set up the magic array just as they had before in the exorcism department to forcefully expel the devil. But to repeat it once more meant that his father would not be there to save him, nor would his mother offer up her life for his. Since it was like this, then why not just live out a few more happy days? When the time came for him to truly become Mara, then he would accept that last blow of Li Jinglong's from the golden sword in his hands and leave the world just like that. Lu Su, you. Ching Xiong said, Hung Jun continued, not thinking of this as anything much, ephemeral mushrooms that sprout in the morning know not of the passage of months, and winter cicadas know not of the changing of seasons. Everything will die one day, and even the heavens and earth cannot last forever. Is there any great meaning in whether I live a long time or not? In reality, on this entire way back, he had often watched Li Jinglong, and the more obvious the feeling in his heart was, the more guilty he felt. He felt guilty not only towards himself, but also towards Li Jinglong. Lu Su protested, You can't think like this, Hung Jun. But Hung Jun merely smiled at him. After having experienced so much, 
he had slowly grown resigned to his situation. You still haven't thought of a way to get rid of Mara, the Karpyao said. Isn't that right? Ammo Rajin also remembered that now, and he said to Li Jinglong, in these past few days, Lu Su has often asked me how exactly we should deal with Hung Jun's devil seed. All of the members of the exorcism department were extremely clever, and they could all see that Li Jinglong didn't actually have a handle on this. The reason they had cooperated with him before was only because it gave Hung Jun peace of mind. No, Li Jinglong replied. I actually really do, but I'm not very sure. The Karpya replied, then let us hear it. I promised Ching Xiong Daran that I would take good care of Hung Jun. Hung Jun isn't yours to take care of now. Li Jinglong protested. When I was climbing up the mountain with great difficulty and bringing him back, where were you? M. Origin said helplessly, what are you holding a grudge against a carp for? The Karpyao shouted back, third eldest, are you trying to revolt? Li Jinglong had no temper at all, but he still studied the Karpyao. Instinct told him that perhaps it knew quite a lot about Hung Jun. He glanced at it, then to M. Origin, everything that he had so far was only his own deductions, but when M. Origin asked about it, he had grown nervous for no reason. He was afraid that as soon as he opened his mouth, M. Origin would mercilessly determine that his plans were erroneous. And what Li Jinglong had been most afraid of his entire life was this kind of feeling, because he wasn't like them. He didn't have the background or qualifications of a proper exorcist, nor did he have any teacher or elder to pass down their knowledge to him. Let's talk about this later B.A., Li Jinglong said trying to avoid the topic. But M. Origin said, say it now. You're not the only one who's concerned about Hung Jun. Li Jinglong could only stay his steps, and he said, the devil seed isn't in his body. The Karpyao exclaimed, shocked, really? M. Origin frowned faintly, but Li Jinglong continued, rather, it's in his soul. That's right, M. Origin said, nodding. The Karpyao, can you not take long breaths between your sentences? Do you remember what happened that day we went into the Deer King Jaitaka? Li Jinglong asked earnestly. After leaving our physical bodies behind, the heart devil seed in Lu Su's body separated from his three Hun and seven Po. M. Origin N. Ed and said, but for Hung Jun, that clearly didn't happen. The seed of Mara is merged with his Hun Po, Li Jinglong said solemnly. Or, that is to say, this is something I'm really not willing to bring up. M. Origin gestured for him to speak. After Li Jinglong mulled it over, he finally came to a decision and continued, rather, there was never any seed of Mara in the first place. Hung Jun is the seed of Mara. M. Origin's breathing stopped, as if a basin of icy cold water was poured on him. The Karpya watched Li Jinglong fixedly before glancing left and right, as if it wanted to escape this place. From this detail, Li Jinglong immediately deduced that he had guessed right. Looks like my guess was correct, Li Jinglong said. Zhao Zilong. What else do you know? The Karpyao didn't dare to pose as the eldest anymore and immediately said, I also unwittingly overheard Ching Xiong Daran say this. You've guessed it all. Zhenqi, you're so smart. You definitely thought that there was a black thing within Kong Xian's body. Li Jinglong confirmed his own guess, and he gestured towards M. Origin, pointing at his own heart. He explained, to escape, he had a son, and saying this, he used his fingers to speak, making a gesture to indicate how tall a small child was, then hooking his fingers as if he was pulling his heart out and pressing it into that small child's body. Then he removed the seed of Mara, and put that in Hung Jun's three Hun and seven Po, Li Jinglong said. But I feel that everyone, including Hung Jun's father, was incorrect in their assumptions from the very beginning. He doesn't have any sort of three Hun and seven Po, he is that seed of Mara that was separated from Kong Xian. This devil seed, to assimilate with the body of someone who was suitable, created the three Hun and seven Po. Getting rid of it is equivalent to burning Hung Jun's Hanpo to ash. 
Amorijin sat down off to the side, not making a sound. Since he had spoken to this point, Li Jinglong saw no harm in laying all his cards out on the table, and he asked, Do you think that this conjecture is reasonable? Amorijin murmured, I understand. Li Jinglong made a gesture to Hush and reminded him, You must not tell him. In his heart, Hung Jun is very sensitive to this topic. Amorijin raised a hand, indicating that he naturally knew this. The Karpiao said, You're so smart, you've even thought of this. Since it's like this, then how will you exorcise it? Even Chong Ming Daren hasn't thought of a way. I will not exorcise it, Li Jinglong said. I'll simply let Hung Jun stay like this, continuing to live on, and beyond that, I'll also take good care of him. Whether he's a Yao or a human, or even a devil, what does that matter to me? M. Origin. The Carp Yao. M. Origin raised his head in disbelief to watch Li Jinglong. Li Jinglong continued, to tell you the truth, things were not very happy when I went home with him this time, but it also reinforced one of my ideas from before. If we play our cards well, it's completely possible, and Chong Ming is also trying to do so. Let's say that there is a cover, a shell, or a seal, Li Jinglong said, that can temporarily keep Hung Jun protected. He made a gesture, and he continued, to Xia Yu, isn't the greatest use of Hung Jun for him to let Mara be reborn? Xia Yu would definitely come find him, and he would forcefully pour the devil chi into his body, just like that day. M. Origin recalled that night in Dunhuang, and he ended, his brows furrowing. Li Jinglong continued, under the condition that my heart lamp is strong enough, I can stand guard by the seal to purify all of the devil chi, or set up a trap nearby, to tell you the truth, I haven't thought through things past this point. Chong Ming's seal is his Yejin palace, but for reasons I don't know, Ching Xiong changed his plan. The Karpia responded, because Chong Ming Daren's rebirth is almost upon us. Li Jinglong froze for a moment. How much more time do we have? The Karpiao began to count on its fingers, and M. Origin hurried to stop it, saying, whether he rebirths or not, wouldn't he know? The Karpiao, he knows, that's why he's very conflicted. Li Jinglong was once again a little worried, and he studied M. Origin's face, testing the waters. Do you think it can be done? M. Origin immediately supplied, it's very reasonable, Zinchi. Only, how do you plan on sealing Hung Jun? You can't think like that, Lu Su said to Hung Jun beside him, sitting on the bed, his back straight. Do you know? I always feel like that fellow Li Jinglong is somewhat remarkable. Hung Jun asked curiously, remarkable. He then thought for a bit, before he smiled. He truly is remarkable. To be born as a mortal, yet to be able to accomplish what he has today. Lu Su shook his head. The remarkable I'm talking about isn't his charisma, nor is it his magic. I heard that Big Wolf talk about a lot of matters involving him, and I feel like he has a kind of innate instinct. When Hung Jun heard the words Big Wolf, he changed the topic. He didn't want to discuss this heavy topic anymore, so he said, Did you know? Before M. Origin met you, he wanted to take you as his wife. Stop teasing. Lu Su hurried to stop Hung Jun's teasing, and he explained, The white deer that the gray wolf likes is no more than that white deer in his destiny, the image of me that he's created in his own imagination, nothing more. If it were someone else, he would also treat them like this. Is there any difference there? There's a difference, Hung Jun immediately supplied. Where's the difference? Lu Su asked. Anyways, there's definitely a difference. Hung Jun seemed to have become a kid again. If this was before, Hung Jun would not have understood, but now he hoped with all his heart that M. Origin could be together with Lu Su. This kind of destiny in one's life, how many people could have such a thing? With that, he began to praise M. Origin with all his might, and though Lu Su wanted to talk about Li Jinglong, he kept being interrupted by Hung Jun. In the end, he grew enraged, 
and he slammed the soft pillow down on Hung Jun's head. They each held a pillow as they began to hit each other, and as several loud shouts rang out, the door to the room was pulled open, and Ammo Rajin rushed in swiftly. Don't fight. Ammo Rajin said. Fuck off. Lu Su hollered back. We're not fighting. Hung Jun replied. With that, two pillows flew out at once, sending Ammo Rajin to the ground. Li Jinglong poked his head out from behind him, saying, Dinner. Everything was as normal as it could be, and when night fell, the exorcism department glowed warmly with light. Everyone moved the tables and poured out wine, celebrating the return of Li Jinglong and Hung Jun, even though A Tai had yet to return. To Hung Jun, this scene was both sentimental and a little disappointing, because as soon as he returned home, he would no longer be able to share a bed with Li Jinglong. Li Jinglong acted like he had before. He poured a little bit of wine out for Hung Gun, and Ammo Rajin once again made a cage gesture to Li Jinglong, who nodded to indicate that he understood. After they finished dinner, Lu Su grabbed Hung Jun, wanting to speak, but Ammo Rajin piped up, he just came home, let him rest for a bit. Lu Su shot a glare at Ammo Rajin, as if there was enmity between them, and Hung Jun said to Lu Su, Tomorrow I'll wake you up. I'll make you lunch, Lu Su said. The dumplings my mother used to make are so tasty. However, Ammo Rajin grew a little uncertain again as to whether or not Lu Su liked Hung Jun. But he also couldn't fault Hung Jun for that, so he felt a little frustrated. He also wanted to talk to Hung Jun, but he hadn't thought that once they returned, Lu Su would keep Hung Jun all to himself, so he could only let it be for the time being. As they were speaking, Lu Su raised his hand again, placing it on Hung Jun's forehead. The spiritual energy in his hand dissipated, entering Hung Jun's forehead, and Lu Su said, Hung Jun, may you have a good dream. It was only with that that the two of them bid each other farewell. The exorcism department returned to the brightly lit way it had been in the past. In the spring night, Hung Jun was still thinking about Li Jinglong, he had forgotten to ask Lu Su in the afternoon what impressive abilities he had. But upon his return, Li Jinglong seemed to have recovered his identity as their superior and no longer acted like he had outside, taking such good care of him in every way. Does he like me? Hung Jun couldn't resist beginning to consider this problem. He seemed to be like this to everyone, to Atai, to Ammo Rajin, to Chiu Yangsi, he was this good to every member of the exorcism department. It seemed like he was treating Hung Jun a little better, but perhaps this was only because he saw him as a ditty. He didn't seem to have heard of him liking any girl, but according to Li Jinglong's own words, there were many girls who liked him. Before they slept tonight, would he come over and say a few words? After they returned to the exorcism department, Hung Jun felt as if Li Jinglong had changed back to how he was before, returning to the Zenji he had been. The hymn of today, compared to the hymn that had chased him on that snowy night and shown him the tattoo on his chest, seemed to be two completely different people. Hung Jun sat on the bed, lost in thought, twirling the cap for the candle in his hand as he debated if he should prod the light a little brighter. Just now, after they had parted, Li Jinglong seemed to have been walking towards the eastern wing to go check up on the case scrolls. Would he still come back later? Hung Jun waited for a long while, his heart an absolute mess. He thought of those words that he had said while hugging Li Jinglong when they were staying in the way station, back when Li Jinglong had carefully applied medicine for him when the two of them were soaking in the hot springs. Without knowing why, perhaps due to the magic Lu Su had cast, he couldn't stop thinking back over the time that he and Li Jinglong spent outside. Li Jinglong organized the scrolls. Upon seeing that everyone had returned to their rooms and that even the Karpiao had snuggled into its pond, he walked out along the corridor, his feet bare, his hair ribbon floating in the wind. There was still a light on in Hung Jun's room, so Li Jinglong headed right for it. When Hung Jun heard the footsteps, he immediately grew nervous, and for some reason he couldn't identify, he hurriedly turned over, pressing the candle cap over the light. All the light in the room soundlessly faded away, 
but the remaining moonlight cast Li Jinglong's tall, broad silhouette over the door. Li Jinglong stopped in his steps, and Hung Jun's heart thumped loudly. You've gone to sleep. Li Jinglong asked from outside. N. Hung Jun curled into his blankets, but Li Jinglong, standing outside the door, seemed like he wanted to say something more. But Hei Tai, who had drunk so much that he was completely plastered, came stumbling in, getting ready to throw up right into the well. Li Jinglong hurriedly steered him to one side, and A Tai hurled into the Karpiao's pond instead. The Karpiao had been sleeping peacefully in its own fishy home, only for trouble to descend from the heavens. When it understood what was going on, it opened its mouth and cursed A Tai out, enraged beyond belief. Everyone woke up at that, and Hung Jun even ran out to ask what was going on, only to see A Tai lying by the side of the pool, crying as he sang. Don't mind him, Ashina Kyung said, dragging A Tai in. He's lovesick. He's lovesick, Li Jinglong responded helplessly. Oh, lovesick, Ammo Rajin said. The rest all went to sleep as well, putting an end to this mess of a night. Before he returned to his room, Hung Jun couldn't resist sneaking a peek at Li Jinglong, only to see that Li Jinglong was also looking at him just then, smiling at him. Hung Jun couldn't help the way his heart lurched at that, and he turned and went inside, heading into his dreams with that smile on this spring night. End chapter